Coming up on First at Four, Governor Bashir gives an update on flood relief in eastern Kentucky. And new video is released involving the students that were killed at the University of Idaho. Plus, some cold air continues filtering in as we head through the weekend. The latest on what that means for high school football coming up as Mountain News First at Four starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at Four, Governor Andy Bashir gave some important flooding updates during his weekly Team Kentucky update. The governor says 2,221 homeowners or renters in eastern Kentucky are not eligible for FEMA aid because they missed an inspection or are not answering when FEMA calls. The governor encourages those people to stop by a disaster recovery center while you can. These recovery centers are going to close November 22nd. So get out there. If, you, if your claim hasn't been approved, if you haven't received enough dollars, we need you in these facilities up to that date. Now again, disaster recovery centers will close next Tuesday, November 22nd. The governor says FEMA has paid out more than $88 million in flood aid. The Letcher County Central High School dance team won region and is headed to the state competition just months after floods devastated their community. After losing their practice space, uniforms, palms, and signs, along with three team members losing everything at their own homes, head coach Casey Mullen says their goal is to win regionals every year, and this year they did it. That's our goal every year, but this is a special group of girls, and they work really hard, and they've had so much to overcome and so many obstacles, but they did it, and they've worked their butts off to make sure it happened. She says they practiced every day leading up to the competition. Some days they even practiced in the morning and evening to make sure the routine was just perfect. It remains chilly all throughout the region today. Even as we start to break back out into some beautiful sunshine, it's still quite cold. Here's a look outside right now. One of the spots not seeing much of that sunshine. I-64 at Moorhead, 32 the current reading there with still plenty of clouds. Let's go a little further to the south here in Perry County. We're all the way up to 36. Okay, it's not that much warmer, but hey, we're above freezing. <laughs> we have, still have plenty of sunshine as well as the sun has broken back out. You see many of us getting the last of those clouds on out of here, and Pinpoint Doppler looks to be in pretty good shape as that sunshine helps some of us get up into the upper 30s to near 40, though many of us remain rather below normal as we head through the afternoon. In fact, we are all below normal by about 20 degrees. And <laughs> in the 20s is where we'll be tonight. Mostly clear, cold, and breezy at times, especially early in the evening, but we calm down into the overnight, down into the mid-20s for those overnight lows under mostly clear skies. I got another day just like this tomorrow. I'll have the latest on what that means for region high school football in a few minutes. Steve? All right, Evan, thanks. Today, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi addressed a packed House floor, officially announcing that she will not seek a leadership role in the next session of Congress next year. During her remarks, Pelosi reflected on her time as Speaker of the House and her time in Congress so far. She said she will serve the rest of her time as representative of the San Francisco area of California, but says she will not seek a leadership position for the Democrats. Pelosi says she feels it is time to make way for the next generation of Democrats to step up. Madam Speaker, standing here today, I'm endlessly grateful for all of life's blessings. For my Democratic colleagues whose courage and commitment with the support of your families have made many of these accomplishments possible. In fact, could not have been done without you. Her remarks also come shortly after Pelosi hinted at her stepping down from leadership following the attack on her husband, Paul, in their California home. Two of the four University of Idaho students killed last weekend are now being seen in a video taken just hours before their death doing the most typical of college activities, ordering from a food truck and chatting happily with friends. Meanwhile, authorities still have no suspect or weapon. CNN's Mike Valerio has the latest on the investigation. 
video that authorities say has helped them in the murder investigation of four University of Idaho students captured on a food truck's Twitch live stream. Cool. Thank you. Madison Mogan and Kaylee Gonsalves are seen ordering $10 worth of food and chatting with other friends just hours before they were brutally killed along with two others. The time of their visit, about 1.41 a.m. That's helping police narrow down a timeline of the killings they say happened within the next few hours. But they currently have not identified a suspect. They believe that this was what they call a targeted attack and not just a random act of violence. But the fact of the matter is that whoever is responsible for these murders is still at large. Authorities were not called to the home until noon Sunday when they say somebody reported an unconscious person. They found the bodies of Mogan and Gonzalez along with Zena Kernoodle and Ethan Chapin all stabbed to death. There was other people home at that time, but we are not just focusing just on them. We're focusing on everybody that um, may be coming and going from that residence. The quadruple homicide has rocked the community of Moscow, Idaho, which hasn't recorded a murder since 2015, according to state police data. Being a student at the University of Idaho, uh, we've had a real privilege of not um, having to have safety be on the forefront of our minds 24-7. This is a wound that um, is deep and will take a long time to heal. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. The Speak Out Act is one step closer to becoming law after passing in the U.S. House. It makes non-disclosure agreements unenforceable during sexual harassment and assault cases. NDAs are usually included in an onboarding process that new hires sign. They bind about one-third of the workforce. NDAs are signed for a wide range of reasons, such as protecting proprietary information to silencing victims of workplace abuse. Despite widespread support, not everyone was in favor. Most Republican lawmakers voted against it. Uber also reportedly lobbied for changes. The Speak Out Act only applies to NDAs signed before the harassment happened. It now heads to the president's desk for his signature. Gloria Steinem has signed a letter in support of Amber Heard, the feminist activist in several organizations, including the National Organization for Women, the National Women's Law Center, Equality Now, and the Women's March, penned an open letter. They expressed concern about the verdict in the defamation case between Heard and her ex-husband, Johnny Depp. The signees also condemned the public shaming of Heard. They say she is getting unprecedented online harassment fueled by disinformation, misogyny, and money. Earlier this year, a jury awarded Depp more than $10 million in damages after he accused Heard of defaming him in an op-ed. Heard also won $2 million in her countersuit. Coming up on First at Four, a Dutch court finds three men guilty of downing Malaysia Airlines flight MH17 more than eight years ago. And we're keeping that mercury low as we head through the end of the week. That breakdown is on the way. When tree